I am about to do something which I may regret. And if it turns out wrong, well, it's gonna ruin a part and make it pretty much unusable. So, needless to say, I'm a little bit hesitant, but we're gonna do it anyway because that's what building trucks is all about. What exactly are we doing? Well, today we're chopping up this intake manifold that goes on the 8.1 big block that also goes into the ugly truck Silverado. Um, we are most of the way through our rebuild um, to get you caught up to speed, if you're unfamiliar, it's the stock 8.1. We just took it apart. We gapped the rings. We put in some better bearings, newer hardware, MLS head gaskets, updated the valve train, bigger cam, better valve springs, and so on and so forth. But anyway, um, I did the painting this morning. There's Nick. He's dropping off an example of kind of what he started. Um, I'm probably not going to go this far, but uh, in summary, this is the top of the intake manifold. On the bottom, it looks like that. Basically, you chop it out, and there's a little shelf that sits kind of right through here, and the airflow has to come into the intake, you know, right through there, goes back, and then it flips under the shelf, and then it goes out to all the cylinders. So that's what we're fixing today in a nutshell. Um, I got my intake stripped down just a little while ago. I got the engine painted up this morning, and everything is looking nice. We're going to get our hot side back from ceramic coating, hopefully in a little while. And then I'm probably gonna get a few things powder coated just because I want this to look nice and clean when you pop the hood, but old and ugly from the outside. It's a sleeper and that's what we're going for. So let's get to work and maybe ruin a part or maybe make it a lot better. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is cut out this little tube right here. Um, its function is unnecessary. All right, so that's phase one complete. Got that little tube off of there. Now I just need to open this thing up. Luckily, there's a casting line right here that is going to make a nice, neat level for us to cut. So all I gotta do is follow that, kind of go across the front, and we can open it up. Definitely no turning back now. We've got it completely cut open and now I just need to cut out the shelf that they put on the inside. I have no idea why they did it this way, but basically the airflow, if you could picture this in profile, um, the airflow enters the throttle body, it goes into this chamber here, and then it splits some to the back, and then some has to loop under the shelf and go towards the front. Um, so that right there is the shelf. And as you can see, the opening that all the air has to kind of cram through is pretty dang small. Um, Nick's intake over here, he opened his up quite a bit. This is where the shelf normally would sit. Of course, he cut the whole bottom out because he wants to rebuild his. I don't want to get quite that um, involved in this one. But um, as you can see, just picture this opening right here in comparison to this opening right here, much smaller. So we need to cut this guy out. It's going to get a little bit interesting because we're kind of working in a confined space. But, you know, combining the long, narrow cutoff wheel with, you know, maybe a sawzall, maybe a couple of drill bits and 
basically you just got to get that out of there and once we do we can get the die grinder in there with the aluminum carbide burr just kind of open it up and make it look nice and then the real challenge is weld it back together that's the one part i'm nervous about i have no idea how this cast aluminum is actually going to weld So we have all the dirty work done, the manifold is cleaned up, it's all ported, smoothed out on the inside, and now we're at my least favorite part of the project, which is where, um, also, which is gonna make or break this whole thing, because everything we've done to this point has gone smoothly, but if we can't weld this thing back together, then we're pretty much screwed. Um, I absolutely hate cast aluminum. I'll admit I'm not the best at welding it. I'm pretty dang low um, on that list. Probably not even on it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hate cast aluminum. It absorbs a lot of oil and dirt and it has porosity in it. And this is probably not the best casting, but the good news is if this works, we'll have freed up quite a bit of airflow because um, check out this, this is the after shot. There is a lot of space that we have freed up for airflow. Hopefully we get like more even air distribution between the cylinders. Um, we'll put a before and after shot up on the screen for you guys. But basically it's clean. I'm just gonna do one last final wipe down. We're just gonna put the lid on kind of like that and hopefully weld it back together. Like I said though, I hate cast aluminum. Um, if this does not work out, um, we could just throw the manifold away. I don't really want to. I do have a Raylar intake, the new, I think they call it the um, 8.1R or something like that. I'll put the links below in a video of the intake so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but because I have two of these 8.1s, I wanted to have this one on my stockish motor and the Raylar intake on my more racy solid roller 535. But anyhow, um, yeah, we got to weld this thing together. So wish me luck. So before we commit and jump right into the manifold, I get this extra little tube, whatever it did, um, just cleaned up about the same way I cleaned up the manifold. Just do a couple of test beads on here and uh, see how it comes out. playing with um, the AC balance. I added a little bit more electrode negative. It's supposed to help with cleaning a little. So that was 50% electrode negative and that was 60%. So you can see how this one had a bunch of like trash and stuff at the top. This one seemed a little bit cleaner. I was gonna try a different filler wire diameter. See if that changes. So just because we are running a little higher amperage, I get a little thicker filler wire to see how it does.
So that's the test with a thicker filler wire. I'm fairly happy with it, I guess. So I guess let's start on the real thing. I think this is where that line in the Fast and the Furious comes from. You're lucky that 100 shot of NAS didn't blow the welds on the intake. Probably an 8.1 owner. I'm nervous, but let's do it. All right guys, I am breathing a huge sigh of relief right now. Um, I got the welding started yesterday afternoon and I got about three quarters of the way through and then all of a sudden we started having major issues like porosity, we had just nasty, awful looking welds that we didn't have like literally, it, it was like flipping a switch. I went into scramble mode, I just put the camera down, tried to solve the problem, um, changed out the gas bottle on the welder, changed every different setting. Uh, different tungstens, I could not figure out what was going on. Um, I think I solved the problem though because I just kind of put the project aside. I went home last night, did a bunch of reading, you know, kind of cleared my head a little bit. And I think that I might have had a crack in either the ceramic cup or the back cap on my TIG torch. So I just went ahead and I installed a new one because, you know, you get these kits when you buy them. Um, so either this ceramic cup, possibly the other back cap was cracked, possibly letting in some oxygen because everything that I read pointed towards the condition of contamination in the shielding gas, whether that's from the bottle, which is why I went and switched one out even though it wasn't empty, um, or just somehow contaminants getting in. I think maybe it was cracked because I swapped it out and then the welding went right back to normal. So anyway, uh, crisis averted. I now have it all fully welded up. And like I said earlier in this video, I do not love welding cast iron and these intakes are especially dirty because, you know, they're, they've got oil inside of them. But there it is, welded back up. This is the one part I was really concerned about. Now, granted, not the prettiest, but I feel like this is going to hold up even with 20 or so pounds of boost on the inside of this. Uh, blocked off that, once again, unnecessary port that used to live there. She's welded up and ready to go back on the truck, or well, back on the engine. I am gonna paint it, um, so we'll do that real quick. We'll get the intake bolted on, and then I believe this is gonna be ready to go back together. A few things I am gonna be waiting on. I think I decided to get these powder coated. I might've mentioned that already. Um, I am gonna modify the fuel rail, um, but at the very least, once I get the intake manifold on, I feel comfortable about putting it back into the truck. So, let's get to painting. Oh, also there's a little rectangular port right here that was the fresh air inlet for the PCV system. Uh, we blocked that off because we are using the valve covers now. So we don't need it.
Well, it's my weekly end of the week update, guys, which means it's also near the end of the video. And fortunately, we have an engine that is just about ready to go in. Actually, we have two engines that are just about ready to go in. Um, this is an 87 Wagoneer. I can't remember if I've given you guys the overview of that, but um, six liter LQ9 is going in. We have the engine mounts all pretty much uh, fabricated, painted. Nick did all that work. We got it. <laughs> we, we've got it uh, ready to go in. The 4L80 has made it to the Atlas. He was working on the shifters down there, got some clearance in the holes um, or the uh, hole through the floor or whatever. Uh, so this one is just about ready to have the engine go in for good. Um, this is what it is, six liter. I think I already mentioned that. It's got a small cam in it. It's been rebuilt by the customer before he brought it to us. But anyway, our project also is in just about the same place ready to go in and i am digging this whole semi-gloss black look um it's going to be clean it's going to be low key and i can't wait to get it in the truck um so what did we accomplish today we have modified our intake manifold we have more airflow through it which is going to complement some of the other upgrades that we have done along the way this is a very mild build in relative terms stock bottom end basically all we've done change the camshaft and change the valve train to flow a little bit more air and spin a little bit more RPM. Like I said, the intake manifold upgrade is just gonna complement that. A lot of you guys have actually been asking about the Raylar intake. I've probably mentioned it a few times throughout this video, but um, my plan now that I've successfully welded this one back up is to run the stock slash modified intake on this engine. I don't really want to blow it up. I want to just have this be a fun street truck that maybe runs nine. Um, but anyway, uh, the other truck slash chassis slash project that has the 535 cubic inch 8.1 is going to get the Raylar intake because that's got a big nasty solid roller cam. It's got some big aluminum heads on it. Um, that one we're shooting for like 15 to 1700 horsepower. Originally, I wanted to have that thing running in April, which has come and gone four months ago. But anyway, you know, buying a shop and all that good stuff kind of got in the way. And then my timetable just kind of goes out the window. But anyway, I'm really happy that we have the 8.1 ready to go back in. So next week, um, I'm going to get it installed. I have the atomic motor mounts. He actually made me these a custom set for the 8.1. Um, but I bet if you asked him nicely, he might make you a set if you're going to do an 8.1 swap. Anyway, um, paint it up. We've got a little new, bit newer balancer on there. Um, we've got our SFI flex plate I got to put on, but yada, yada, yada. The engine's going in next week. Um, I'm going to take off those fuel lines that run on top of the transmission. We're going to be running some, I believe, 8 or 10 AN lines. We already have the two big pumps in the tank. If you guys haven't seen this truck before, it's got a... Uh, S480 turbocharger that sits off to the side, makes 800 and change horsepower, 1100 pounds of torque at the tire. Anyway, it's a burnout machine. That's it's really all this truck is. But it's a ton of fun and I can't wait to get back together. I can't wait to see how much further we can push this stock 8.1 with the upgrades that we've done. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Come back soon. Have a good one.